Hello, Ectosage here on the Sage Shell, and as per usual, I did some streaming on Fre- Okay, so it was streaming on Saturday. I was about a day late. I got all busy with photogrammetry stuff, and it ended up, well, not even panning out at the end of the day. But anyway, I did stream late Saturday into Sunday morning. Anyway, I spent a fair amount of time making a large thruster segment for a huge ship that may never be finished. Turns out, though, that large thruster segment, I kind of like it. So I turned it into a ship of its own, and that's what you're looking at right now. Uh, I call it the Atreides, because it kind of sounded like Atreides, and also I just wanted to mess with it a little bit. And it's a giant flying cube. I won't lie to you, it's a flying cube, but I'm quite happy with it. I'm also quite obsessed with Satisfactory still, so I decided to actually color it with a bit of orange, and of course, a darker dark blue. I think it actually turned out all right, and if we were to go ahead and buzz around the beautiful thing to this other side here, you'll actually see, even though it's a little hard to see, there are some lights on it. In fact, what I could do is control C this really quickly, fly all the way to a dark side of the planet and put it in, in a spot where you can actually see those giant, wonderful lights. And I probably put it in upside down, but whatever. As you can see, there are lights hidden around all these beautiful ribbings and stuff. So, yeah, that is the exterior. I do have an oxygen generator stuck in here for whatever that's worth, the kind that use light to make good stuff. But, um, well, don't count on them actually doing much, even though they're plugged in. They're pretty sparsely, well, this shit in front of them. Let's put it that way, eh? Anyway, uh, as you can see, engines have a little bit of an orange light, where all everything else has a bit of either a blue, gentle glow, or a more heavy-duty blue. If we were to go ahead and head inside it, which would probably be most easily done by actually going back to our character with a little lovely little press of F6, wait for the world to load and then look up, we can fly up to the sort of almost like hangar bay section here at the very base of the ship where we have yet another connector to match the trillion and one you have just seen at the front of the ship because it is a cargo ship. Ow, that hurt. I wonder if that would have killed me if I was in survival. Anyway, let's go inside here, this inefficient airlock, seal that up and actually go into the body of the ship. And the interiors of the ship are, well... Expansive and yet not. As you can see, it's a fairly cramped interior space, and I've gone ahead and used the LCD, LED, whatever lights on the ceiling, which are basically just screens set to a, in this case, sort of purple, but it comes off as a white color and show told to show their text, even though they have no text. And that lights up the area fairly well, I find. We basically have one hallway and then the control area here. Everything, as per usual, though, does have vents and it's all airtight, so you can walk around in here and not die. And unlike everything else I've built over the last couple months, this doesn't use the special rotor rotation thing for thrusters. So, I just have programmable blocks here in case you want to do something special and fun with those if I ever get this thing on the workshop. I know my last build didn't make it onto the workshop yet. It didn't let me upload and glitched out and I haven't gotten around to it, but hopefully this will end up on there someday. Anyway, I do also have a medical room which is sort of open to the bridge and has its own vent because it does. Uh, and as well as a little area over here, which is basically passenger seating if this ship was in theory doing a quick jump from spaceport to spaceport just delivering a big bulk of supplies that might bring a few passengers along with it. Hence the reason for all these chairs. It's only intended to have a crew complement of really two people. I guess you could have three and you'd have to share a bunk. Because rooms, you have one room intended for the captain. Very small. It gets the job done. And then another room intended for whoever the heck else is with him. So maybe the captain has his own room and his first mate and the engineer have to share a room here. Yeah, it's not brilliant. But we can come back over here and we got two doors to our left and our right. Each of these leads into a little storage area. So we got a little storage container there and actually goes up. The whole idea is this is engineering cargo containers. That way the engineering staff can have their own stuff. Or really, maybe it's more like crew storage. And then on this side we do have... And ignore the blue light that's leaking through from the other side of the ship. It's a thin floor. There's not much between us and the outside world. But we do have a little tiny assembler and a refinery just in case they need to do some quick repairs while they're out and about. You could imagine that if there was a tiny bunk, maybe the engineer would set up his own thing there. So you'd have a captain's quarters, an engineering area with the engineer's bed and the first mate, co-pilot, however you want to say it, 
with his own little room as well. Anyway, these doors and ladders lead back down to both of these sides. I think that's pretty straightforward. And then if we were to go through this door, which somehow I ended up floating there for a second, that was strange. And into this area, it's all depressurized because it's a large open space, which is the majority of this ship. As I said, this was originally going to be just a thruster segment, so it was originally going to be a bunch of thrusters at the back wall like this, followed by more thrusters and more thrusters and more thrusters. Turning this into something that had to actually fly in every direction on its own means I had to stick thrusters inside of it. I spaced them out so they shouldn't burn everything down here to bits, but that's also why we have such a low ceiling for everything in there, because I had to have a bunch of thrusters inside the ship or else I'd be sticking them all over the exterior of the ship and, well, it wouldn't look too pretty. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why so many thrusters this way? You're probably not thinking of that. You realize we're already in orbit around the moon. Henceforth, we need thrusters to keep us in orbit, or else we just drop straight out of it. We do have some reverse thrusters, so we can go up or down if we are in zero gravity. And then we have a bunch of jump drives stuck on either side, so the ship can actually jump pretty far, as well as a bunch of thrusters to go ahead and reverse the ship. Not counting, of course, the ones that you saw outside. We also have left and right maneuvering thrusters here. It's not equal in every direction, but it's got a fair few thrusters scattered about. And then, of course, we have a gyroscope-filled ceiling to make you dizzy at the overkill of gyroscopes. Hmm. Cargo is basically like a L-shape. If you were to look at it upside down, because it's here, here, and here, you get it. It's like an L if it's upside down. And that goes four deep. Aha. <laughs> Three deep in each of those sections. So it's not the most cargo in the world either. It's not a brilliant ship. I'm not going to lie. It's not a brilliant ship. I just like the way it looks. And I decided to actually make it work in slight atmosphere. Anyway, let's go ahead and really quickly run around. We'll actually take it for a little bit of a fly about because it does function. And we go through all these bloody doors. Run ourselves all the way back to the bridge. It's such a simple ship really, isn't it? It's like, what? Why, why have the big bulky body? Because I looked cool. Because look at it. Look at it. From the outside, not the inside. So I think it looks pretty cool. It also looked pretty cool in gray, too. Maybe I shouldn't have painted it, and I should have left it just the way it was. You want to see it the way it was? There. That's the way... Oh, wait. There. That's the way it was. You get, like, kind of more of an industrial feel to it, but, you know, you lose a lot of the breakup. I actually do quite like it like this. But I do also quite like it like this. It gives it more breakup. One thing I do miss, though, about the gray is that on the dark side of the planet, you could definitely see those lights a little bit better. So, oh, you bitch. There, a little bit better. It's like with the gray paint job, it really, really shows up. So in bright light, it doesn't look too much better. But in the dark, I really do quite like the way it looks. So, anyway, you can always recolor it if I ever do get it up on the workshop. Anywho, with all of that said and done, let's go over to this gigantic flying rectangle and actually take it for a spin, shall we? So, UI up, you can see we do have enough power to actually hover without issue, and I have tested this in the past by loading up all of the cargo containers, which I shall now demonstrate, with tons of construction components. And you can see, with them all full, the ship hasn't exploded in horrible fire. Which is the reason why we don't have more cargo containers inside. I originally stuck a bunch more in there, and, uh, yeah, it didn't fly anymore. But like this, you can see, I'll go ahead and wait for our speed to hit pretty much zero. I can hold a spacey bar, and we actually do, very slowly, start going upwards. So you can, fully laden, fly this ship. And I do actually have all the reactors full up as well. So this ship actually does function in moon gravity, even with maximum gago nonsense filled up. And you can see its acceleration forward isn't actually too, too bad either. It does actually function. Now, we might want to, for demonstration purposes, empty it out. But if it's supposed to be a cargo ship, we really should leave the cargo in there, shouldn't we? So we're going to leave the cargo in there and leave this thing flying, well, in its drifty, super-duper heavy way. And you can see it drifts good. <laughs> it drifts real good. In fact, we could go to our F8 and see this thing drifting from afar. It drifts real good. <laughs> There's no quick fixing this thing's drift. Yeah, so watch out. It's guaranteed to cause you trouble like that. Um, as for maneuverability, it can turn on a dime, kind of. Yeah, no, actually for its size, I'd say it can turn on a dime, but um, you don't expect its speeds to change 
anytime quick like. Let's go ahead and fly it actually out of the gravity of the Blendoid and go ahead and test those jump drives, shall we? Hmm. What? There we go. That scared me. The speed was just dropping there. I'm like, are we just going downwards? Are we doomed? Uh, we're good. We're fine. Ignore the creaky ship sounds. All right, I think our gigantic rectangle is probably out of the gravity. Even though it still shows a plane in the bottom right, I'm pretty sure that's just our, well, rather basic. Hey, look, you have artificial gravity in your ship. Anyhow, let's go ahead and aim ourselves at that. I don't actually have a camera at the front, something I'll uh, fix before we go ahead and put this up in the workshop. Let's go ahead and see where we can go. It's actually been quite a while before I, since I last jumped the ship. Oh. Was that really a max distance? Okay, well, turns out I can't jump as far as I thought. Maybe I'll stick some more of those in there before I put it up in the workshop. Maybe I won't. Anyway, guys, that's this ship. I guess you probably want to see it crash real quick, so let's do that. And I figured what better place to see it crash than on an Earth-like biome because it can't fly here at all. Yep. So let's just throw it at maximum speed, shall we? Yep, there it goes. Um, anybody have any goodbye songs maybe for it? Something we could sing to say goodbye, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, good night. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, good night. I hate to go, and leave this pretty side. No, nothing. Alright, it'll just smash into the earth then like everything else we've ever smashed into the earth. Actually, that, that fared a bit better than I expected. That fared a lot better than I expected. So let's hit it with another one. Oh, right. Anyway, guys, that'll be it. Thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Ta-ta.